Let's try another set. Huh? Today we're going to do a uh, chirp flare and uh, in the past we covered like a flare chirp kind of combo but this is a chirp flare which is different it has a different accent but we haven't covered uh, the chirp flare as far as a, a drumming scratch but we've covered uh, you know like a scratching pattern with like a, uh, and a fresh or something of, um, of a flare chirp flare chirp combo like two flare chirps to one and one uh, flare combo up the link to that but this this is a, um, a easy cut if you already know the chirp and if you already know the flare so the chirp was you know invented by Jesse Jeff and it's just basically going like this it's basically like that so you're just going you're starting um, it's an open fader scratch so you're starting in open position all right and um, so you can see my kick is right here. So we're just in this combo. We're just going to be doing the, the the chirp on the kick, and then we're going to do the flare on the kick and the snare. So it's going to go like this. So this is the chirp. So the chirp just has one click. So one click at the change of direction. So like that. All right. So all right. And it sounds a lot like a rub, which is. The rub has that smoother sound, so the chirp is a lot sharper. Alright, so it's going to start like that. So it's a chirp, and then a flare. And a flare is, uh, on the forward motion, it's going to be one click, like that. And then on the backward motion, another click, like that. So you're clicking at the 50% point, so it's going... So... Like that. Simple as that. And it makes six sounds all together, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six sounds in total, so it's going. And you notice that it's in a three, four um, kind of time signature. Let me turn this up a little bit. So. Alright. So it's like that. Alright, it's very simple. So. like that. Alright, so the chirp, this part, that was made by Jazzy Jeff, and then the flare, this part, that was invented by DJ Flare, so we're merging those together. And this is a very popular scratch. You'll find a lot of tutorials of the, the, the chirp flare online. This is kind of why I'm covering it so late. This is like hyper drumming number 57, I think. Um, but uh, it's a very common scratch that you'll see a lot, a lot of new school DJs use and they'll use it on the, the ah sound or the, or the fresh sound but today we're going to use this or you know they'll use it on any sound especially phrase scratching this sounds really good with phrase scratching and the, another thing about this scratch is that you can do it with pretty much any kick and snare it doesn't matter the style of the kick and snare because like the other ones we were doing a couple in the past couple weeks we we're doing a lot of three clicks and two clicks and those it matters if there's an empty space between the kick this kick here and then the, and the, the snare but this one it doesn't really matter, so we're just gonna focus. We're gonna practice on it first. So here we go. So it's double, double. So it's double, wuka, wuka, double, wuka, wuka, double, wuka, wuka, double, wuka, wuka, double, wuka, wuka. So it's going. All right. 
ring. So it's double wuka wuka, double wuka wuka, double wuka wuka, and it's three four. So it's going one, or you could count it as six. It's like one two three four five six, one two three four five six, one two three four five six. Makes six sounds for every loop. So, so. And the cool thing about this too is that it's also a continuous clicking scratch. And we'll add this to the section of uh, continuous clicking cuts. And what continuous clicking means is that this, this crossfader is always moving at a rapid, at a, at a constant rate. So it's continuous clicking. So it's going to go. Whoops. Let me start off with the, the, the chirp first. So. Sounds so. All right, it's like that. So. All right, it's like that. All right, so now we're gonna go a little bit faster with it. All right, so that's how it sounds when it's going faster. And you can also make this kind of sound upbeat, like kind of like a drum and bass track. So we'll, we'll start to do that. Let's try that. clicks in total in this so it's just going and it's making six sounds so you can go really fast with this so So now we're going to start to speed it up. So. change the sound now. Let's see how it sounds a different sound. So this 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 scratch can sound good on most sounds because it doesn't matter if there's a big space in between the kick and the snare like I was saying before. So this one, we'll try this sound.
that one's kind of sounding drum and bass a little bit, like like some kind of triplet kind of drum and bass, like. So. Or even like a lot of the old school rock and roll kind of stuff, like. Or even swing, a lot of old blues did that kind of rhythm where it's like. But it's, it's still a triplet, but it, it kind of feels upbeat. with that all right and if you got a band set up you got somebody playing bass somebody throwing some synth on you know you can make some funky stuff with the with just chirp flares so you can if you do a slow chirp flare it sounds like this you can make it sound like a drum beat like and it's important to note too that the click on the chirp is kind of happening at the same time the same place where the click and the snare is, is happening. We're gonna, so we're gonna draw it. So let's draw this scratch. All right, we've got, we're using the, uh, some bills coming in the mail. And uh, hopefully in the future, when uh, this is uh, like an exhibit somewhere, you know, the price of, the sale price can be bigger than, greater than the actual bill that's in here. Um, but you know, I pay my bills online, so I don't even need the envelopes really. It's just a reminder. So this is six sounds. All right, so we're gonna draw six placeholders or six increments in the beat. So we're gonna cut this in half. All right, now we're gonna cut this in thirds, like one, like that. These aren't perfect thirds, but we'll do our best. All right, two, all right, gonna go like that. All right, so so this first part. All right, and I'm just gonna go like this, so it's more like that. That's more like a ruler. All right, as we can see, these are thirds right here. That's thirds. So this is six all together. So this, this, so it's starting like this. It's starting with a, uh, there's different ways you can look at it, but we're going to start like this. So this is the chirp first. It's going like this. And I'm also going to add this uh, kick and snare um, designation so we know that, that this is the kick. It's the kick drum, and I'll draw a little wave file. And then this is the snare. How are you Serato people out there? Um, all right, so that's the kick, that's the snare. All right, so the, and this chirp is basically going like this. It's not, the chirp is only happening on the kick. So this, the range of this scratch is not gonna go beyond this snare line there. All right, so it's just gonna go right here like that all right and then the chirp click is going to be right there all right so that's the chirp all right and right that right here that's a chirp all right and then we've got one two three four spaces for the flare so the halfway point of the flare is going to be right here all right so this flare is basically it's much bigger than this chirp like that so it looks like that all right, and then so, so we can see, like I was saying before, this click is happening right before you get to the snare. 
And then, but when it happens on the flare, this, the click is going to be in the same place. It's going to be about here. See that? So that's the, this is the 50% point of the scratch. And this is the 50% point of the forward motion or 25% point of the whole scratch. All right. So that click is happening there. And then this click is happening right here, right at this point. This should be over a little bit. All right, like that. So it's like that. Very simple. And this is a flare. So this is a chirp. So this is why it's called the chirp flare. So this is a combo. So this is the chirp flare. All right. And let's get back to it. All right. So we've got the chirp flare now drawn out. So let's try this down again. So, so the chirp. So it's the v and the click is happening right at the change of direction. Like. And this is happening before you get to the snare. So you want this click to happen before the snare. You don't ever hear the snare in the chirp. You could do a chirp snare by making this chirp extra tall, but it'll just be much higher pitch. And when you have it like this, this is the same pitch. This chirp and this flare are at the same pitch because this angle and this angle are the same. Even though this keeps going forward, this is still pretty much the same angle. Whereas if you went all the way up, it'd be a higher pitch. It'd be like, it'll sound like that which doesn't sound as cool, but that's a whole other uh, uh, variation, you know, so it, you know, it can sound cool to somebody. All right, so, so we're just going to focus on doing the chirp is on the kick, and this uh, the two clicks and the, the flare are happening between the kick and the snare, so, so. Let's try another sound. Another scratch patch. So, like that. So, so. all right. And like I was saying before, you can get that kind of drum and bass feel if you do the right accent, where it's just like. Actually, sounds this might be the um, the sound that Hubert was using maybe in, on on turntable TV and wave twisters. Might not be, but it sounds like it. He was doing something like this. It was more like a wasn't it, I don't think it was a chirp flare. It might have been a flare chirp like this. This pattern that we've done before in the past with I'm um, fresh, just like this, like this. let's see. So like something like that. So like, you know, he's like turntable TV. So it was something like that. But, the, and that was different what I was just doing. I was doing a flare first, then a chirp. And it's basically, if you loop them together, then it's technically the same. It's just about where you, you're coming in and where you're accenting. So, you know, most of my life, I've always just been doing uh, flare chirps because I was kind of influenced by that, that, that wave twisters track. But, and I was always trying to replicate that back in the 90s. I was like, oh, how did he do that? Or late 90s or 2000, whenever that came out. Whenever Wave Twisters came out, I heard it and I was like, how do I do that? So something like this. Like, whoops. Let me try, Let me try a little, another part of that. Song. So like this. And that's a pattern that we've done before. And I'll put a link to that, but uh, that and that's basically um, a flare chirp, flare chirp, and then an extra flare at the at the end of the bar. So that's a whole different pattern. 
this is just a chirp flare pattern. But I was playing that because, it, you know, when you have that, you could hear anybody that knows that song, you know, you're going to hear that it sounds kind of like that. All right, so let's go back to the chirp flare. So the chirp is going... Notice how you can make it sound a lot of different ways. If you go super fast, it sounds like some crazy chip tunes, sped up stuff. If you go slower, you can make it kind of sound, feel like an upbeat kind of kind of feel. And you also should check out Cash Money has a, a mix. I think it came out last year, maybe two years ago. And he's he was mixing like 1950s and 1960s music. And you know a lot of that music is like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock rock. It's that same kind of upbeat kind of the. So this is this can kind of fall within that. It's like All right. So it sounds like that. So let's try it again. All right. So now, so notice that this is continuous chirping, so Whoops. With that, I was just doing an example where um, I was doing the slow chirp flare where you can hear everything and it sounds like a down tempo drum beat where it's just like that. Which is a lot like this. This is the, the, the hand motion. Try another sound. Alright. So. so you want to start out going slow like that. Always start off slow. You know, any all these scratches that I've learned, everything I started off super slow, unless it was something that I had already learned before and it was just a combination of two other things, you know. Um, so you always want to start off slow. So we're going to start off real slow. So we're going to go, so. And also I can't stress enough that being able to, you know, faderless cuts are very, very important. You know, if you can't, you know, be able to make a beat without the crossfader, then, you know, you should practice first, okay? So, you should always be able to make a beat without the crossfader.
so you notice how you can start it out as a down tempo beat, and then as you s speed it up, it become it slowly becomes up tempo. So it's like like that. But then as you speed it up, it's like and that's when you can get into the upbeat. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna start off slow as a down beat, and then we're gonna make it into an upbeat. So. So I kept going faster and faster every every bar. So let's see how fast I can go. All right, so you can go really fast with that. Now, please note that I've been doing flares since you know since since the nineties. I've been doing flares for, you know probably since like. Uh, DJ C's, also known as Rob Wonder, he learned the flare from DJ Clever, and D and then he taught me the flare back when, I guess I was probably still in high school. No, I was. This was probably like 90, 97, 98 or something like that. This is before Clever won the DMC. I actually predicted Clever was gonna win that year, cause he was just so sick. I was like, man, Clever is so sick. There's no way he can't win. I actually judged him in a battle in Atlanta. Uh, like a year or so or two before that um, and he's just you know he's just on a whole other level all right see a lot of people don't know there was a battle scene in Atlanta in the 90s in the mid to late 90s at this place called Out of Control you used to have like DJ Shotgun you know JC uh, DJ Shotgun was like Good Goody Mobs DJ and uh, yeah Rob Wonder you know uh, DJ Clever you know and, and I was too scared to get up in battle back then so the first time I was able to get up on stage and cut was maybe like New Rican, uh, you know, like Rocky, uh, you know, one of Rocky's events, um, you know, the early open mic joints, open open table joints. So here we go. So. Let's change the sound now. Alright, let's try this. We're not going to use that one because that one is just uh, doesn't have a defined kick, kick snare. It's got a snare kick. But all these we're doing kick snare ones. And in the future we might, you know, we'll do like the reverse or inverse of it where it says snare kick. But that's, you know, we're focusing on just kick snares for now. So. I like how it sounds uh, slower. It sounds kind of abrasive. All the sounds sound really loud, but I think when it's faster, this one might sound cool. So. Yeah, it sounded better like that, but you know, it sounds good every way. So. So you can see that you can use the chirp flare to just do basic drumming. Just like And the cool thing is that since it's continuous clicking, you can transition into transforming. And I'll do an example of that. Maybe like so.
go fast with this one, one more time. snare that we've been using for most of these tutorials. I think we're at like number 57 now. So. I'm not really a fan of rim shots, um, snares, but the cool thing about this rim shot is that it's very, it's kind of quiet. So when you're doing a lot of crazy scratches, it's not super loud. Like that last one, when you go really fast, that snare gets really loud. So. Did that snare? All right, see. So yeah, this like I was saying before, this cut sounds cool in a lot, a lot of different stuff. Cause it doesn't. It's not using a lot of clicks. It's not. It's not like three clicks or two clicks. Where if you're clicking on empty space, like there's usually a lot of empty space between kicks and snares on most samples, but not all samples. Um, but uh, you know, this one is just really versatile. This one is probably one of the most versatile of a lot of the combos that we've done out of 57 condos, combos, combos. I was like condos and combos. Funny. So. So you notice my technique changes when I start going faster, like I, I learn them and practice them in two different ways, you know, like when, when I'm going fast, you see I'm never really like, I'm always going like that, but when I'm going slow, my hand is kind of like on this, and it's more of a calculated kind of click versus uh, um, just like a fast um, focusing on speed kind of click. So like. See, I can go faster when I take my hand off of this thing. But you can still, you know, um, I, I suggest uh, to any DJ out there, you know, whatever feels best for you. Though there are some ways that are physically faster. Um, but, uh, but you know, whatsoever is more comfortable. Because when I do calculated clicks, I like to touch the mixer. You know, so when I'm doing like deletes or... Uh, scratches that don't have a lot of clicks, but I have to think about where the click is going to be. Then, then uh, you know, I touch it more, touch the, the mixer more. But if it, if I don't have to worry about it, then you know, uh, then I, I end up going like that. But you notice I usually don't start in this fast mode, but I can. But it's more uh, likely that I might mess up or something like that. So I'm always not trying to mess up on camera. So that's why I'm starting out like this, like. <laughs> Let's try another set. Huh? All right. So let's see. so it, can, it sounds a lot more sloppy if you mess up um, and I, I, can, I guess as a general rule like if it's a really crisp kick and snare um, and there's a lot of empty space surrounding it then you're only going to hear those kick and snare things but if you have like a lot of like crash and just a lot of extra reverb and other noise then um, on the good side you can cut with that noise but on the bad side if you mess up you're going to hear that noise so or it'll sound, it could sound more sloppy if you're not as on it if you're not as on point. So let's try it again.
fire beat, so. how to start sounding like drum and bass especially if I missed a click or something like that or I move or if it's a little bit different of an accent and you don't hear a kick or a snare you know it just sounds like a little space in the beat and it kind of you know I kind of had an upbeat jungle feel when I was kind of doing that So it's going. Jeff and this is a flare invented by DJ Flare. So it's going the foot, so it's going the foot, wooka wooka. The foot wooka wooka, the foot wooka wooka. So it's the foot wooka wooka. So the foot wooka wooka, the foot wooka wooka, or the foot wooka wooka, the foot wooka wooka. So I was saying before, this, this scratch sounds good on a lot of different sounds. It's probably one of the most versatile. That's probably why it's one of the most popular. Like a lot of people can do this. A lot of people can do chirp flares. But you don't hear a lot of people doing chirp flares on a kick and snare, though. And that's why I'm focusing on this. And we'll do a chirp flare with just like a regular sample scratch sound in the future. But right now we're just focusing on the kicks and snares. Distracts you when you're doing the chirp on the kick. You have that really high hi hat, and that was kind of distracting me. But you know, sometimes hi hats sound cool. But I didn't like it on that one.
you notice, in that one I was doing the double time one, the double time chirp flare, and the half time chirp, chirp flare. So that's a pattern you can do too. Actually, I had never done that before. That was the first time I did that. And I was like, hey, let me just do that. So. So we're going to do the same one with this side, so some new scratch patches, so let's see how it sounds. And the reason why we're going through all these sounds is to really kind of see what sounds best on these, even though this sounds good on a lot of different things, but you know, we've done a lot of different scratches using these same sounds, and you notice that a lot of, some sound better on some, and some sound better on others. So let's try this. for the kick to be kind of like alone but you know it sounds cool so let's, let's try it but notice when this sounds fast it doesn't it just sounds more like you're it just sounds a lot more cloudy than a lot of the other ones So when I'm ever at Ethiopian restaurants, I'm kind of vibing out to a lot of the different time signatures they use. Because, you know, usually pop music is always like 4-4, four, four, like 1, 2, 3, 4. But you go to other countries, you go to the Middle East, you go to Africa, and you might hear a pop song on the radio and some crazy time signature music. It might be like... It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So... The 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 write that down over here. We got six sounds. So this is this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sounds. Alright. So this is the chirp. Flare. So trebly. All right. And notice 
again, notice I switch from the slow version of the chirp flare where I'm touching the mixer and I'm like kind of calculating my clicks. And then I went to the fast one where I'm not touching the mixer where I'm just going like that. And, and it's going much faster. It's kind of like an airplane where, you know, the airplane is like taking off. They're in like takeoff mode. But once they get up in the air, they're just like, phew, they start going fast. Like they're not, they can't go in the same mode. But I mean, you know, you could start off fast, you know, uh, but, you know, I, I just like to do that. Okay. So let's try another one. But that one sounded pretty cool. I mean... The only thing that I really like about this one is that the snare has a melody to it. That's the only thing that I think is really cool. So I like a lot of the other ones better, actually. So. sound like drums when you're going really fast it just feels like I'm scratching some sample um, so yeah so let's draw out this double speed one so um, you see we'll, we'll do a little instance of going half speed and double speed so we're gonna do the same we're gonna do the same chirp flare and this one is gonna be the double speed of it all right so we're gonna use this as a guideline we're gonna divide this into threes and that's the threes Let's make a better three right there. It's a bad three. Make that the three. That the three. All right. We'll go like that. All right. Now we're gonna cut this into six. Cut that in half. Cut that in half. Cut that in half. All right. So remember the chirp is going on the first two. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the kick and the snare. This chirp is on the first two. So like that. All right, and the click is right there. All right, see it like that. All right, and then we're gonna do this one, this flare. We're gonna draw a circle right there. Right there, and this click is gonna go right there. And then this click is gonna go right there. All right, one more circle. All right, so, so yeah, we can see that. So this is going the same thing. This is the double speed version of this. So this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, you know, so it's like that. And that's what I was doing that, that one time. All right. And then, so we'll, we'll look at these together. So um, I'll draw two of them. So this is double time. I'll write that down. This is... I just write it up here. Double time. All right, so it's double time. All right, so yeah, we got it right there. So let's. let's see. Turn this bass back. So let's start this up. So
So this one is, has a lot more empty space than the other ones. So that last one I was doing had not a lot of empty space, but notice this one. See, there's an empty space in between. You hear that? There's nothing there. Just some, you know, just some static from me scratching so much. So you see how it sounds, so like I was saying before, when you have a kick and snare that's like very clean and, and crisp and not a lot of other hi-hats or crashes or samples or rides on it, then it's, it's going to just be a lot more sharper of a sound. So. Alright, so... So you notice that was a lot cleaner than some of those other ones because, you know, the sound is already clean to begin with. Alright, so let's go faster this, with this one. in snare and uh, you know it's very pronounced when you start going fast or crash it's not even a snare it's a crash like a right like a simple opening or some type of sound so it's like a crash This is an, a core, core essential scratch to be able to integrate that with, with, with being, uh, with going, you know, with no fader at all. But notice how when I'm doing faderless and the sound isn't crisp like those other ones, it doesn't sound as good. Like it just sounds a lot sloppier. It's like, like there's so much noise. It's like, but you can get around that by doing like tears and be like It's like lifting weights, you know, you want to start off slow and then build up and build up as you get stronger and stronger. And also, too, you know, uh, even though this is a long session where I'm going for like, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, I think it's better to practice in short bursts, like, you know, 15 minutes here, 10 minutes there, than to be like, hey, I'm just going to practice that two, two, for two hours. Like, the only time that I'm cutting like this for a long time is if I'm doing a tutorial, but... Generally, if I'm practicing, I, I'm, I'm only practicing for, you know, five minutes here, eight minutes there, 15 minutes there, seven, because it's like, um, for instance, I was just doing a three-click orbit on this beat where I'm at my speed, my maximum speed, and when I'm rested up, I can do it at that speed, but when I'm not rested up, if I've been scratching for like, you know, 20 minutes, I can't go as fast, so you don't want to, you don't want to practice uh, doing stuff where you're trying to increase your speed um, when your arm's already tired because, you know, your forearms, your wrists, all these things can get tired over time and you don't want to wear them out. So I, so, so all the aspiring tables over there, I would say, you know, uh, um, I mean, it's cool every now and then, but I don't think it's, it's healthy to, you know, practice for more than a half an hour straight. Um, because, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're doing that, what happens is you just start tiring out your arms and then you start practicing while you're tired and then your mind starts remembering 
like, oh, I'm trying to learn this new scratch, but I'm tired. So, so then it, it learns like that. It's like learning to playing basketball and you got some weights on your arms or something. And if you have weights on your arms trying to throw the ball, when you take the weights off, it's going to mess your game up. Just like if you switch from a women's ball to a men's ball or something like that. So so naturally your, your body is going to uh, get slower the more you... Um, the more you cut, so that's why, especially if you're doing transforms, that's why I, I, I don't, tra you know, you know, I, I, I don't uh, practice transforms a lot just because they wear out the arms, like things like really fast stabbing, you know, just things that can, uh, you know, hurt the arms in general. But when I do tra practice transforming, my drill coolies and stuff like that, I just do it in a lot of short bursts, like oh, five, a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there, every now and then, just you know. So it's good to keep your, you know, um, during the day, my turntable is on like this all the time where it's just, you know, it's turned on and it's plugged in. Maybe I have the volume down, but, you know, I think it's better to, to instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to practice for um, an hour and 10 minutes. And one day I think it's better to break it up and be like, oh, I practiced 20 minutes earlier that day, 20 minutes at night, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So, so let's see. So... All right, next sound. So. experiment with like you know doing an upbeat kind of jungle kind of beat but yeah so that, that was that so. I used to practice, you know, I used to practice, you know, two hours a day. I would practice two hours a day over beats, like over my favorite beats, and I'd just be jamming for two hours. And, you know, I was able to lock down certain techniques, but the thing is, if you're just jamming all the time, then you're practicing jamming, which is a great skill to practice jamming, but uh, if you're trying to learn new techniques, is what I'm always trying to do, I'm always trying to learn new cuts and increase my scratch vocabulary. I realized that, you know, jam, you know, I, I rarely, I don't jam a lot now because I'm always practicing new techniques and training my brain. And when you're jamming, you're not, you're kind of, a lot of times you're doing stuff that you already know and known territory. And I'll say as a t tableist, it's good to challenge yourself and step outside your known territory because when you're just jamming um, or improv or whatever you want to call it, then, then uh, a lot of times you're you're doing these cuts that you know and you're and you're just kind of flipping things that you've already done before and if you want to step outside of that and get and do things you've never done before then i you know would suggest you know just practicing new scratches and then trying to integrate those into your jam sessions because before i used to just do two hours a day and i and i've learned uh more scratches in the past three years and you've seen most of them on videotape uh the past four years maybe past five years i've learned more scratches uh, and using shorter amounts of time, like just folk practicing for 20 minutes, 10 minutes here and there, um, then all those years of just, you know, it was like four years straight, I, I probably practiced two hours a day for, you know, every day, you know, every day, two hours a day, I, I, was, I was practicing. And at that point, I only had like, you know, maybe eight scratches in my vocabulary. Now I got like, you know, I don't know, 60, 70. Let's go. So let's see. But you 
notice how this one is very crisp and clean. There's no hi-hats or rides or crashes, so it sounds very clean, especially when you start going fast, it sounds very good. Like This one has a very crash in the, a lot of crash in the, the kick is really low in this one. You hear that? You barely hear a kick, so let's see what it sounds like. sound very very different so I notice I messed up on one of those and it became like two stabs it was like <laughs> instead of like a chirp or something all right so let's the next one So that one doesn't have a 16th note kick snare, so let's skip that. It was like boom. So make sure your kick snare is like kick snare. It's got, that's why these records are made like that. Now you notice I'm not using Serato. I, I, when I'm practicing, I, I recommend all DJs, you know, practicing with, with real vinyl because, uh, you know, when, uh, I, I think, you know, Serato's cool. And especially having no skip and all, all that type of stuff. But, uh, you know, on the, on the different modes and whatnot. But uh, I think that, you know, you can just have a no-skip record do the same thing. And when you're... And I, and I really do feel that there's some sound... Like, even though the vinyl is emulating what's happening with, with the record, I, I think that they're... Um, especially when you get really, really fast, some of them might sound a little bit different. Because, you know, it's just like... With a lot of these uh, software programs, you can kind of hear some graininess. And, it, and this, sometimes the scratches don't sound totally realistic as they do in nature. But if you never heard somebody scratching on a real vinyl before, then you wouldn't know the difference. So. Oh, oops. Let's see. There it is. So. disappeared because notice how there's a heavy bass in this like that but when I was going fast you didn't hear any of it listen So we're done. So let's do a quick review. See how we're doing on time, about an hour long. Do a quick review. So this is the Chirp Flare. This is the double time version. And this is the half speed version. But you know, you could even do a 75% speed version, you know, a cross rhythm version, you know. And like I was saying before, let me flip it. Let's see. Let's do a cross rhythm of this. <laughs> Cr 
crossword right there. So we're gonna go. We're gonna do two of these, and then we're gonna add an extra, um, um, an extra flare at the bottom, at the back of itself. So it's gonna go. So I was, so I was going. All right. So. All right. So yeah, with that, I was, I was going. I was adding an extra, um, I, was, I was making a, a pattern out of it. And that pattern, I'll, I'll draw that pattern that I just did. Um, it's basically this times two with the extra um, kick and snare. Um, but I, I'm not gonna draw it, because that's, that's a whole nother lecture. We'll do that pattern in, a, in you know, some, some cross rhythm um, lecture. But this isn't about cross rhythm, this is just about the chirp flare. But I was just showing what you can do, you can make it into a cross rhythm. All right, because you know this is like, you know, in six, and then if you add another thing to make it eight, then you're gonna have a nice even little block. But this one I was doing two, so it was like six plus six, so that's 12. And then I was doing woku woku, you know, um, at the end, and I was like adding some more. But uh, yeah, all right, and that's it. So let's do, a, let's look at this, all right? All right, so we got a, um, the whole pattern right here. So he's calling me. All right, so this is the chirp flare. All right, and I'll let's see. I'm gonna write. This is very important. The flare was invented by DJ Flare, and this is by the chirp. It's by Jazzy Jeff. And anybody uh, that knows, but the chirp stress, Jazzy Jeff used to make it sound like a bird chirping, and then and he and Will Smith would be on the mic and be like, "Look, look up in the crowd, um, you know, and there's a bird, there's a bird in the, you know, in the stadium, or there's a bird in the club," and people would think it was real because he was making the, the chirp sound like a like a bird chirping. So that's why they call it a chirp. Um, and also for those who don't know. Um, uh, you know, I'm also, I also act as well, you, you, you can find me in uh, two Will Smith movies actually, I'm in, I'm in uh, Collateral Beauty, and I'm also in Men in Black 3, I'm just partying at World Hall's house at Men in Black 3, <laughs> it's kind of silly, but uh, yeah, alright, so, peace y'all.